Well, what motivates me or what motivated me was, uh, I mean, the, the, the fact that I believe in, in this society that we live in, uh, that we live in in Cuba, the project that we're building. I believe in the justice that brings to the Cuban people. Uh, I believe in the, in the sense of justice. Uh, I believe in the right of our country to uh, decide what kind of life we Cubans uh, want. And I believe in the, in, the, in the right of our people, the Cuban people, to organize our society the way we decide to organize the society. And that nobody from other country, it doesn't matter how powerful it is, uh, uh, should say what we Cubans want to do with our own country. And nobody has the right that in order to change that, to, to attack the Cuban people, to harm the Cuban people, to cause death to more than 3,000 Cubans that have lost their lives uh, through the years uh, as a result of attacks like that, and more than 2,000 that have been uh, uh, hurt and are living with the, with the scars of uh, uh, terrorism coming from the United States. Uh, and uh, I don't believe either in the right of a country to harbor those kind of individuals and protect them. That's my motivation. Uh, um, as a political prisoner in the U.S., how did the how did the treatment you received compare with that of other prisoners? And what is your view of the U.S. prison industrial complex? Well, I would say that uh, the the treatment that we received uh, from the prison authorities were the same treatment was the same treatment that any other inmate would receive. In the United States, there is no, uh, the government doesn't uh, recognize the figure of a political prisoner. So we had to serve our sentences in regular prisons in the United States uh, with persons that are in, in prison for many reasons. Uh, we didn't receive any special treatment. We received the same treatment that uh, the rest of the inmates uh, received. However, there were times in which we were harshly treated and we were placed in isolation with no reason, no justification and just pretext to apply kind of uh, uh, harsh measures against us. And, and it was not, to be honest, the, the prison authorities that decided that. It was always out of an uh, uh, order coming from Washington. It was for political reasons because we never violated any uh, uh, rules in the prisons that would uh, 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 mean that we were taken to uh, uh, punishment uh, cells or anything like that. It was always as a, as a result of a decision taken uh, in Washington, and politicians taking the policy, and of course the prison authorities would follow, uh, would follow those uh, orders. There were those moments when we were uh, treated very harshly. At the beginning, when we were arrested, that we were placed in isolation, and we were only taken out of isolation because we fought in court. And then back in 2003, while we were in different prisons throughout the United States, we were taken back uh, to isolation, each of us in, in the prison that we were at at the moment. And it was as a result of an order coming from Washington. And by the way, it was, it was the, the solidarity that uh, force the U.S. government to rescind that, that measure. We were supposed to be isolated for a year with the, with the possibility that the, the Attorney General would uh, renew that measure for another year. And uh, we were, uh, uh, the, the measure had to be rescinded after 30 days in isolation because of the letters that came from all over the world uh, to the Justice Department and to the White House requesting that we were uh, free from those conditions. So we're very appreciative since then to, for the movement uh, in our, in our, on our behalf. And finally, um, what message would you like us to bring back to the British people? Well, I think that the, the one of the lessons, I would say that the, the most important lesson uh, uh, out of this uh, struggle to free the five is that you fight and you struggle and you struggle until you win. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, uh, it doesn't matter how much effort uh, it needs to be put in the, in the effort, 
uh, you resist, you fight, you, you don't give up until you win the battle. That's the, that's the main lesson that uh, it applies for, uh, it applies in my opinion to everything and anything, even the personal uh, situations that you went, you go through. We all through life, in life we all through, go through the difficult situations. And that's the, the spirit, that, uh, the lesson that comes out of this, uh, this struggle. And you can take it to social issues, to all kinds of fight. It, and, and you fight for what you believe in. Even though sometimes you know that you're fighting for something that you're not going to be able to see yourself. But you're so convinced uh, of what you're fighting for that, it, that you, you keep fighting. Even if, if it is for your grandsons or your granddaughters, uh, for them to, to receive the, the fruits of that, uh, that, that uh, struggle. Linda Gonzalez, thank you very much. Thank you.